So, I've been getting back into Starbound again, which isn't something I thought I'd say, but it's a game that I haven't played for, you know, quite some time. I put a long period of time into it back in, like, 2013, I believe? You know, back when it first um, appeared in Early Access, and everyone was really excited about it, and it was a really interesting game at the time. And uh, a lot of people kind of build it as Terraria in space, more or less. And although that isn't exactly what it was, it still had quite the following. I put a good, like, 40 hours into it at the time, and uh, eventually I sort of moved on to other things, because I wanted to ha watch it develop for a while, since it was in very early stages at the time. And then about a year later, I had some fairly major updates by then, and I put another, like, 20 hours into it, and uh, it was different, but, you know, not super different. And then I kind of just let it go, and uh, just wanted to see what would happen once it was actually done. And seeing as how it's version like 1.3 now, it's been out for a while, it has been finished for quite some time, and it's no longer in early access. And I've been hearing a lot of things about it, I decided I wanted to actually give it a proper try, now that it's actually done. And what I've found is... A game that is quite different in a lot of aspects from what I remember, but also still still very similar. Still pretty much the same as I recall, but mechanically has some, I guess, refinements and some changes. <laughs> Freaking out of the background. But I'd like to do a lot of, you know, modding videos and things on this channel because modding is something that I do a lot of in almost every game I play. And I've been hearing a lot about a mod called Fracken Universe for Starbound, because it does have workshop support now. And uh, I've heard that it kind of addresses some complaints and things about Starbound that a lot of old school players had about its sort of lack of content or its uh, overall sort of rigid progression from how it used to be and some other things. So I decided, you know, why not? Let's give it a try. And that's what this video is going to be about. It's, uh, it's something that I've really quite enjoyed, actually. It's addressed some complaints that I've had, and it's improved some aspects of the game that I felt were a little bit lacking, now that I've actually played it for a while that it's been released, and uh, this isn't going to be a guide or a walkthrough or anything like that. I mean, it's a 20-minute it's a video. Come on. I can't, I can't do something like that in 20 minutes. Uh, the, the mod is actually quite expansive and extensive. But this is really just an excuse to talk about the mod and talk about what it offers, and I think there are a lot of other people in a similar place as I am that have maybe wanted to come back to the game, see what it's like, and have found it good, but are maybe left wanting more. And I've found that the mod has actually provided that more in a couple of interesting and important ways that I wanted to talk about. So let's start off with, what the heck is it? What is Fracken Universe? It's actually a bit like a mod pack for Minecraft, how those work. It's a large sort of overhaul of several main systems of the game and a pretty significant injection of content in many, many, many areas of it. Including things like uh, the progression, as in like the various tiers of materials that you will go through for building weapons and armor and things like that. The crafting, the uh, biomes and exploration, as well as the protection systems, the overall difficulty, uh, crew, crewmates, and a couple of other things. Right now in the background, I'm actually exploring an Eden planet quite deep underground. And Eden is one of the new... Excuse me. <laughs> well, professional Eden is one of the new biomes, and we'll talk about some of those later. It's a very lush, uh, sort of biological life-laden planet. And I'm exploring it underground, and I found that cool little sort of ancient tomb earlier. And uh, I keep going a little bit and find some other stuff before I leave. But the first couple areas I'm going to show you are a bit of exploration. But don't worry, we will end on a more action-y note a bit later. Some battle in the rain. And what uh, one of the big draws, in my opinion at first, at least for me, of Fracking Universe was the biomes that it adds. It adds a lot of new biomes. So, it adds, oh gosh, there are a lot, it, Death Stars, <laughs> the uh, Cyberspheres, which are basically Death Stars that you can visit. Their entire planet's made of, like, metal, and they have seas of molten metal and things like that. They're very dangerous. 
uh, crystalline worlds, which I was actually able to completely mine out one of not too long ago in the game. The trees of crystal and crystal underground and some unique uh, materials called Lunari and there are ice crystals and things there that you can find that allow you to craft some pretty pretty good stuff. I have some of that on my character right now, actually, it, this uh, that crazy ice wand thing. It's quite strong. And there's even quite a bit of uh, healing, like liquid, on those worlds as well. There's this sort of purple fluid that gives you regeneration when you stand in it, which is strange. It makes for a very pretty looking world of like crystal. There are some other places like these, uh, let's see, there are mountainous worlds that I've seen one of. It's pretty much exactly what you would think, you know, it's if people complain about starbound planets generating too flat, well, you should visit one of those. They can actually be very difficult to actually navigate without mining a lot of it out or having huge jump boosts. There are these crazy things called chromatic worlds that I wanted to actually show you one of because I was in one in the system that this particular planet is in before I moved on. I was gonna film it, but I discovered to my dismay that as well as being very, very pretty, they're also horrifically radioactive and I have no radiation protection and I currently don't have any of the materials needed to craft any radiation protection. So needless to say, I beamed down and died in like five seconds. So don't go there, kids, unless you have very good radiation protection, because it will kill you. They're very pretty, though, while you're dying, so that's good. They have some pretty unique stuff to find there as well. There's some other really odd stuff that I should talk about, like these, um... Uh, what were they called? Oh, goodness. I can't remember. Uh, Atropos. Atropos worlds. Those are nightmarish. Uh, they're basically undead planets. The entire planet is sort of alive. The... Oceans are, like, blood, and the continents are flesh, essentially. The entire planet is sort of a living or undead organism. There are, like, rivers of blood and other biological material. It can rain blood on those planets, which is very metal. They're uh, horrifying. And uh, they have, like, trees with eyes growing on them sometimes. They're, they're pretty crazy, but they're also highly dangerous, and uh, they cause... Uh, madness in your character, which is a new status effect. Don't stay in the lava, by the way. Lava's dangerous, who knew? And madness is just absurdly dangerous, and you have to beam up almost immediately upon it being inflicted on you, because it's it will cause you to, I mean, go insane. You lose your mind. Now, this planet I'm going to show you right now is called a Tabula Rasa planet. This is another one of the new biomes. I just wanted to show you the surface of because it's interesting. I just wanted to explore it because of the name, really. Tabula rasa, for those who don't know, is, I think, Latin for uh, blank slate. These are going to be interesting for people that want to start a colony, and that has also been improved in Fracken Universe, the idea of creating a new uh, colony or settlement and building on a planet's surface, which is something that a lot of people complained in Vanilla Starbound is kind of, you know, useless or just not fleshed out enough. Tabula rasa planets are exactly what their names suggest. They are an entire biome where no life exists, but they are not dangerous on the surface. They're not like a wasteland where, you know, little life exists because everything was horrifically destroyed. They are just this, a sort of blank nothingness, because at some point in the past, something happened, as the codex entry says, that may or may not have wiped out all of the life on the surface. No one knows exactly what. All everyone knows is there's nothing there anymore. They're actually a bit eerie, almost like some of the SCPs I've read. <laughs> There's like SCP level eerie exploring the surface of these planets where it's just silent nothing for just miles. But they're also really neat. They have a lot of peach trees and also you'll find some chests and things occasionally, which you'll actually see in the footage here where I found some really good stuff actually, like some scorched cores and things. And uh, Really, they're just really, really good if you want to start a colony. There are actually things that in the mod that allow you to attract specific races and build buildings, and it's... It, basically, I found a lot of the stuff in this mod makes some of the building and stuff like that work a bit like Terraria's building and uh, attracting NPCs and things like that. Which is only a good thing, in my opinion. That's actually quite useful. 
And uh, these types of planets are really pretty cool. There's a bit of a story there, and uh, they're quite useful for that. Also, don't dig underground <laughs> on these, because just because they have no life on the surface doesn't mean there's no life at all on them. It actually gets pretty crazy dangerous down there. So try not to dig down until you're ready. We'll just say that. These are very cool for starting worlds uh, of NPCs and things on. Very neat. The Some of the other features of Fracken Universe include things like uh, completely altering the progression, the crafting progression of the game. Some people feel that the vanilla Starbound progression is a little uh, a little rigid. You know, you go from tier 1 to tier 2, like from you know copper to iron to you eventually end up at like titanium and tungsten and blah 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 you go from one to the other in a very rigid order but in fracking universe there's a lot of new materials some of them specific to certain enemies or specific to certain biomes and things like that and a lot of them are side grades or sort of like a tier 4.5 and things like that it's not such a rigid straight line which i think is really neat actually and by the way, here is our last planet. Before I continue, we found a uh, a fungal planet, which is just like a giant, well, fungal colony. And I found some mushroom people and a thunderstorm. And, I mean, you'll even see me collecting some stuff on this planet that's just specific to it, like some uh, fungal materials that I can use for crafting special things. And I just got them because I'm here. Um... So that's something that I really liked about it, because I do personally feel that the progression is in Vanilla Starbound is a little rigid. It's, uh, you know, a little bit on the, you must do this, and then you must go to this tier, and then you must get this material to go to this tier side. It's kind of a straight line, very linear. And this does help to delineate that a little bit, actually a lot of it, and provide you with a lot of boosts to the the sets, there are actual item sets, a ton of them, with different set bonuses. And the set bonuses can vary from a lot of things. Actually, this is another thing that reminds me of Terraria. In Terraria, you often get sets that provide bonuses to your melee combat, or to your magic, if you're a magic user, to your guns, and your bows, and things like that. Uh, Fracking Universe has a lot of armors that do that sort of thing. Something that Vanilla Starbound did not have. And uh, I personally prefer the armor sets to be kind of like that. You know, you'll get sets that the one I'm wearing right now is Nautilus armor. It's good for going underwater, good for pressure defense, and I think it even empowers a specific weapon type as well. I don't remember though. I haven't had it for too long. Um, it's it's neat, and there, I've seen a lot of like a rogue set that gives you a crit bonus with daggers. You know, just a lot of extra variety with things like that. I even seen one that gives you water walking, which seems like it could be really useful. And that brings me on to one of the other things about the mod. It does make the game more difficult, but not in a way that I personally feel is unnecessary or overly difficult. For instance, one of the big changes is with the environmental protection packs, the EPPs, EPS, which is in Vanilla Starbound, once you craft one, it gives you an immunity to that particular type of environment. So if you craft the one that protects you against cold environments, the warming pack, it will grant you an immunity to extreme cold. In this mod, there are lots of them. Different packs for the different environmental effects. As you would expect, there are even more effects because there are lots of new biomes. And the packs no longer grant you an immunity to the effect, but rather a resistance to it. Anywhere from like 20 to 60%. And the extra resistances to help you be even better guarded against it are supposed to come from crafting the new armor sets that are meant to guard you against specific things to every backpack. Uh, the packs also have augment slots now, which can slot in extra bits of uh, gear and immunity providing, or resistance providing augments. And even things like getting genetic alterations or eating certain foods or having certain uh, crew members. There are a bunch of new crew members that can provide you with different bonuses for that. Basically, it's a lot more variety, and uh, although it does up the difficulty, it doesn't take away the ability to get those immunities. It just provides you with different, more roundabout and longer sort of lasting means to get them. It doesn't just hand them to you, and I don't mind that. I think that's fine. 
some other changes, for instance, would be things like, uh, there are like a hundred new status effects-ish, which is crazy. Uh, Darkness has a, a new, I suppose, prominence. There are a lot more dark areas and lighting and light sources are a lot more important. There are a bunch of new uh, weapons and projectile types and things like that, a bunch of new armors. There are a bunch of new sub-biomes, so you can find things like dried-up riverbeds, and uh, I found some other pretty crazy stuff underground. Uh, there's new stuff for just getting to the core of a planet, which is cool. A bunch of new star types, like black stars, which are insane. You do not want to go to them unless you're like a really high, highly geared up individual. There are a bunch of new enemies, um, a bunch of new micro dungeons and dungeons. The website actually lists about 150 as the number, which is pretty crazy. So you, you can find a bunch of new uh, generated places on planets to actually explore, which helps to, you know, reinvigorate the variety of the game. There's some other, what the uh, list calls atmospheric biomes, things like corrupted meteorites and some other things that are up in the, uh, the atmospheric landing sequence where you don't just go to a planet, you actually go to them like in space and explore them with mechs and other things like that. There's a lot more to that now as well, which again, more variety is good. The actual crafting system has been overhauled. There are a ton more crafting stations and they have a lot more effects now. One of the problems that I, and I think a lot of other people ran into with Vanilla Starbound was having a bunch of non-crafting material blocks in your inventory that you just threw away. You know, you'd have like a stacks of different kinds of dirt and stone and, and stuff like that that you weren't going to do anything with. You know, you weren't going to build with it and you didn't, you couldn't turn it into crafting material. So you just sort of threw it away. Now, almost all of those can be turned into crafting materials through the extraction system. There are uh, extraction labs that can turn those blocks into various kinds of materials. Some of them are materials that you can almost only get that way. And you can also find a lot of new kinds of fluids, and there are liquid centrifuges, extraction systems that are for the liquids as well. Which is very cool. Uh, a bunch of new ores, and the actual crafting stations have a lot of variety to them as well, so you can do things like uh, pulling genetic sequences out of seeds and crafting gene uh, sequences to actually modify yourself or to create like hybrid plants for cooking or for crafting new materials to craft exotic uh, armors and things like that. Basically the entire crafting system has been overhauled to be a lot more complicated with a lot more steps, but not overly complicated. It might be a little bit overwhelming at first, but maybe that's a good thing, you know, maybe you want to be overwhelmed at first in a game where you feel like you know exactly what to do as soon as you drop in because it's become so simplistic to you in such a straight line. Maybe you want to be a little bit overwhelmed and not know exactly what to do next and make yourself explore a little bit. That's how I felt, and uh, that's what this mod did for me, so I'm happy with that. And, of course, things like cooking and there's bees. You can actually domesticate bees and get a bunch of exclusive crafting materials from them for new armor and weapons that are crazy, by the way. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot a lot of stuff here. I'm only kind of glancing over what's available, and there's a lot to it. I heavily approve of this mod, and it's compatible with a lot of other things as well. I'm actually using a couple of extra things in the background, like a new race, the Alithian Races mod, and the Fracken Races plugin, which adds some almost MMO racial selection, like, uh, I suppose, passives to selecting your race, where different races have different positives and negatives, like this particular one is really good in deserts. They get bonuses to deserts, desert climates, and if they're in a cold environment, they get some negative afflictions because of that and things like that. You don't have to have that. It's an optional plugin that you download separately, but if you want to, they are compatible. I'll link you in the description to the Fracken Races Workshop uh, page, and you can take a look at it, and it also has the collection linked on there to where you can see some other stuff compatible with it. That's not an exhaustive list of all of the things that's compatible with it, of course. That's just to help get you started. And really, you can have all of this on your Starbound just to play with simply by hitting subscribe. That's all you gotta do. It's really pretty awesome, and I would highly recommend it. And uh, I'm gonna lay down with this Florin, or in this Florin's house, rather, and take a nap. I'll see you guys next time.